I can see that these actually the ones here are still like a juvenile form of everything. That's yes. why they are still here. But we're gonna look at some of the bigger plants. Dear plant lovers, if aeroids tickles your pickle, this episode is made just for you. I visit a tiny garden in Singapore filled with insanely huge aeroids. Our host, John and Eun, are new to the hobby but have quickly mastered plant care, which they're generous enough to share. If you want to know their secrets on sizing up aeroids so quickly, you will have to be all ears throughout the tour. You will also be rewarded with discovery of interesting and rare aeroids. There's an encore all the way at the end of the video if you stick around. If you appreciate my work producing these videos, please do like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because YouTube heavily rewards engagement, which helped me grow the channel. Without further ado, let's get this tour started. Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia, and I'm accompanied here by John and Eun, and we are in Singapore, and it's their plot called? A, a Blood Moth Green. Yes, yeah, so we are in a plant community here where a lot of people have these plots of land for plants, because Singapore is quite constrained with space. So yeah, I really enjoy their determination to grow these plants in these very limited but wonderful spaces. Uh, first of all, they're a married couple. How long have you guys been married, by the way, can I ask? <laughs> one, one year and a few months. So still, <laughs> one year and a few months. So still fresh. So from what I gather, John here is more of the nerd. He's like the, the guy that's into the plants and everything. And Yoon's like, I don't know, a bit helping out and kind of into the game as well. She's, she's going along. So I'm, she's the supporting <laughs> cast of the plot. <laughs> so I'm going to ask her some tough questions first. Okay. And just to test their marriage, put their marriage oh. to the test. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to test me about plants. <laughs> but, but Yoon, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, share with me John's top three favorite plants. Top three? Yes. Monstera. Which one? Show us, actually. Platinum. Yeah. Okay. Come, I'll show you. And John, if her, her answer is wrong, you have to. <laughs> you have to tell me. We have. We will. I'm quite confident, but he has so many favorites. Okay. So I don't think he even knows the right answer. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Which one is the plan? Do you even know? <laughs> I'm kidding. Hang on. <laughs> I'm kidding. John, is it here? No, it's not here. <laughs> it's not here, right? <laughs> That's why. It's going to the ICU. Oh, okay. okay. I know the second one. Do you have a photo of it? Maybe we can yes. put on the screen. Yes, yeah, and it's do. better days. Yeah. Okay, we'll insert it somewhere. <laughs> the other favorite is this one. It's called Monstera Yellow mm, Marilyn. Okay. <laughs> right? It's your favorite, right? Yes. Yeah. This is my favorite. And actually, you know what? I've seen many Monstera Yellow Marlins. This one has a really good variegation. It's not as big as some other collectors, but the variegation... Oh my gosh, this is really good. It's like more than 50% variegated. Nice. Yes. Good job. Okay, and the third one. Is it the another Monstera? <laughs> um, he really has so many favorites that no matter which I say, I think I'll get it right. <laughs> the top three though. The top three. Okay, tell me which category. Philodendron. Bernardo Pazzi Nero. No! Oh, dang. That's not your favorite. <laughs> Close. Marcus. No! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the twirly whirly thing. No! Oh gosh. <laughs> Wait. Oh, uh, Spiritas? Yes. Oh, oh, Spiritas. That one, right? <laughs> yes. I see. Interesting. Accidents or plant death stories? <laughs> uh, what if he gets some like memories and gets upset? Yeah, he this? gets all this trauma to come uh, back. Why don't we invite John to bring my latest accident over? Yeah. Is it still alive? <laughs> okay. Oh so my god, what happened? What is this? <laughs> okay, one day I was on a decluttering spree at the back. Yeah. And I saw these two things that were cut up, these two big leaves and a long thing and yeah. it had very little roots so I really didn't see the roots so I thought he went, just went pruning and cut something off right yeah. so I wanted to put it in the garbage can but it was too big yeah. so I took the two things and just snapped it into the half and shit. chucked it into the bin and the moment I put it in then I realized shit this looks like some deliciosa <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I looked at the leaf it was pretty minty actually what did I cut up until now I still don't know deliciosa elbow 
Oh. Deliciosa Albo. Oh, so not the, the not the Borzigiana. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> it's here. Well, it's still alive, and fortunately, it's I still think alive. the other one died. Yeah, the other so one. there are two nodes in there. <laughs> no, uh, there are two propagations, two leaves. Yeah. yeah. But then you have the plant somewhere. It's um, the base cut is over there. Okay, so that one. Okay. Which Interesting. Time? Okay. What happened after? Did you guys like? Did he, punish, did he punish you? <laughs> he was so nice about it that I got really scared. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> like the nicer he was, I was like, oh no. <laughs> Very I guess nice. we will try to keep this one alive. <laughs> well, now you have a story and this one probably means a lot more now that it's got a yes. story. If Other it survives. <laughs> if it survives, you know. Yeah. I was quite surprised when I saw a, a growth growing up because this has no roots at all. Yeah. Yeah. Be gentle with it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're into plants as well. <laughs> you're so funny. Yeah, you're. But you're... I hear about it enough to tell you, like I can name the plants about seventy percent of them. Yeah. Because I hear about it so much. Yeah. But I don't like love plants. <laughs> yeah. But you're such a role model for a lot of plant persons. Spouse, because you know not all spouses are so yes. supportive, yes. and the fact that you're kind of stuck here. How often do you come here? Like every week? I every think week? now I only come once a week. Yeah, mm. but that's a good commitment, you know, to come for your husband's <laughs> support yeah. your husband's hobby. That's amazing. And you guys have a setup here that looks like a tent. Have you guys ever slept overnight here? No way. Oh, no, it's, no. it's a mosquito over. A um. Lot. It gets quite cold at night. Yeah. And like there are wild dogs out there, so. What is the most sacrifice you've done in his hobby? Wow. <laughs> like maybe the, the most like. I, I think quite a lot. So when we were at home, when we used to be at home, yeah. we would have to water the plants and that would take about two hours straight. Oh, okay. So there was a period where he was so busy, I would have to water the plants. Yeah. And it was just ridiculous because like they just felt like a burden. <laughs> <laughs> for you, right? Yeah. yeah. For me too, actually, at one point. Yeah. Which is one of the biggest uh, factor why we decided to have. Uh, yeah, this. that's why we got a plot. Yeah, so watering two hours for like twice a week, that was tough. And I think after we came here, I think the greatest sacrifice was all the digging. So we did like a lot of rough work. Yeah. Like graveling and digging. Yeah, can I yeah. see your fingernails? Is it fine now? They are, they are. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't like, I don't before. like the mixers and dirt in general. Yeah. So normally I just put on like rubber gloves and okay. do stuff. At least he lets you wear the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> and wildlife. Yeah. Oh yes. And frogs. And oh I shirts. hate frogs. Oh but they, they do have jump out of yeah, they snails, do insects. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And last question, maybe this is a bit for John. From the scale of one to ten, how well would you rate Yoon's plant care skills? <gasps> Mm, actually, I think it's a. Good, you think properly. <laughs> good seven. Good seven. Good seven. She can do, do basic things like reporting, propagate, propagating, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, she's quite good. At this. Yeah. And you're right that she's a very good role model of a plant parent spouse where she really yeah. does Maybe everything I was without just complaint. Forced into this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I only learned how to like report stuff because one week he was down with COVID yeah. and he had so many new plants coming in so I had to lug all of them here and for the first time I had to like carry put it. them into a pot. <laughs> oh you should tell him the, about the story about your, when you carry this into the car. This one? Yes. Oh what was this form six is yes. it? Yeah this came in a large cardboard box yeah. and it came when John had COVID. So I had to bring this cardboard box which was huge enough to fit me inside yeah. into the car and bring it all the way here so I brought it down to the car then when I was opening the boot yeah. I heard the the uncles of like the town council the people that clean up yeah. they were like pulling it and they were wondering is this rubbish oh my God. and I had to be like no that's my husband's plan <laughs> yeah so this wow so you went through a lot for your husband's hobby this is amazing yeah okay one last question uh, before I, I uh, move on to John to look at his amazing collection, what is your favorite plant? My favorite plant? <laughs> this is the toughest question. Why don't we ask John? <laughs> yeah, John, what is her favorite plant? Hmm. I think it might be the Jacqueline. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> oh no, the Warrock. What's the Warrock? Oh, the Queen, the Queen. <laughs> and, not really. 
Oh no. Hmm. I've never thought about this question before. What? Okay. It never came up during like a dinner conversation. Like, no. Like over some wine, you look into her eyes and you ask, to be honest, I just... what is your favorite plant? No, actually, <laughs> I think he has asked, but I've never given him an answer. Yeah. Yeah, because I really don't have a favourite plant. I think I'm just more sentimental towards the plants that came with us from home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because or, they've been around with you. Yeah. Or those that have like a shipping story. Yeah. You know, those that went through tough times. Okay. Yeah, I have more emotions for those, but the rest are just like, ah, okay. <laughs> Especially some, you know, they grow from like really tiny and then now they're yeah. huge. Yeah. It's nice to see that over the years, like, wow, that little thing turned into this. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Your lovely w- wife is so amazing at yeah. telling interesting stories. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you walk through us with your collection? Just walk through us, like, what you like, what you have, what's growing. Sure. I actually enjoy Monsteras quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, for example, this is the Brazilian form, the common Brazilian form. Yeah. Very simple and very cheap, but it's spectacular. Okay. Yeah, just look at the fenestrations and everything. Yeah. So actually, if you walk around my plot, you see a lot of Monsteras. Yeah. Like the Dubias, the Pangtu Lata. This is a yeah. special one. So real quick, this is the Dubia that is like grown like all the way up mm. there. Yeah. This is a special one. It's a Pangtu Lata, okay. which I shared with my friend. Uh, Journey through Paradise, Russell, not too sure if you okay. know him. Yeah, so this is a special one as well. Yeah. So many Monsteras, just different forms and shapes of Deliciosas. Yeah. Yeah. So I really enjoy how they finish. have a lot of stack horns as well. Uh, this is uh, something that, uh, a new rabbit hole that I'm diving into. Okay. Yeah. So I'm yeah, hoping I wouldn't spend too much money on them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's some Dinila that's beautiful and it's hanging. Yes. Yeah, on here. Massive, so, massive plant. Philodendrons are also something that I really enjoy growing um, for the fact that they grow so fast and they can get massive. So this is actually a philodendron SP then. Um, I'm not too sure what it is. SP Columbia? No, it's not really no, SP Columbia. One. Yeah, so the SP Columbia has uh, darker veins. Oh and gosh, yeah, beautiful. But this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a uh, uh, Pinati Partita? Yes. Yeah. And this oh is a God. glorious that got stuck behind the oh, pose. Yeah. <laughs> actually, this is special. This is the, actually the Monstera Pangtulata. Pangtulata is the one that we saw earlier? Yes. Oh, but this is the juvenile form. Yes, and it morphs into okay. something like this. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a shingling plant. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like a dubia, but it doesn't have the silver of the dubia, right? When no. it's younger. And it's also a cute little, I don't know what is it. Refidophora right? tenu silver. Not tenu, it's, sorry. Something else, I think, right? This is a tenu silver. This one? Yes. Yeah, but I, I don't really know how to grow them, so they don't really look very pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It's Well, it's doing its happy. It looks happy here. It, it looks happy, but it's not getting... It's not maturing. Yeah. yeah. So this is the rest of your plot here. Yes. And you are like a late comer here. You've been here for what, a year? Or a year. Yeah. yeah, probably a year. And this is a huge UPI. <laughs> massive, massive. I'm going to stand behind so I can see it's taller. So for reference, I'm 1.93 meters. Oh yeah, and this thing is taller than me. Wow. Yeah. But I, to be honest, I got it quite big. Um, when I got it, it was around this this leaf. Yeah. But it's this tall. height or? This height. This leaf around this height. Yeah. And I'm judging you now. I see that the old leaves are still hanging in there. That's crazy. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I, we, we just recently reported this with uh, Leslie. Yeah. yeah. And it was uh, quite a big project that we had to do. Yeah, oh my this gosh. This is, liters. this is huge. <laughs> this is really big. So it, in one year, it grew that much. Yes. It's getting really good conditions and care. And for yes. the first time, it's actually flowering. Wow. Yeah. So I'm quite excited to see uh, the flowers. Yeah, the yeah. flows. But you just basically admire them without like actual pollination thing or any breeding. Yes, I don't really pollinate pollin- pollin- them. I just admire how they look like. Yeah. Interesting. Can you talk quickly about your potting medium? What? So I use a lot of uh, bark, mm-hmm. uh, pumice and polite. So yeah. these are my three essentials and go-to for um, potting medium. Yeah. I find that the pumice and perlite gives me enough uh, sufficient drainage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whereas bark also retains some a little bit of moisture, but then it doesn't disintegrate like uh, cocoa chips. Okay. Yeah. But to be honest, recently it has been raining quite a fair bit in Singapore and yeah. um, I experienced some rot in my plot for the first time in a year. Oh, okay. So I'm still experimenting and learning with regards to potting compositions and whatnot. Yeah. So it's because of the rain, you can't control the rain obviously because this is like very open, it's just a shade cloth. And 
Is there like th times when you actually need to water or miss the plants? Um, if it doesn't rain for an entire week, then yeah. I will make the deliberate action to water the plants. Yeah, yeah I just hose them down, give them a good um, uh, uh, soak through. Yeah, manually. I, yes, manually. And I fertilize my plant quite aggressively, actually. Really? So I fertilize them um, weekly, yeah, with a quite a high dosage, not quite a potent dosage. Oh wow, so to get them like big, faster, mm. it's a chemical or a... a chemical fertilizer. Do you know, can you share with us? Uh, like foliage brand? focus, so that okay. is really something that I I use that I've, um, I've seen the growth after using them. Just as a, uh, for a beginners, actually I don't recommend to over fertilize yet, but if you want to experiment, if you, like John here, you've got like a nice environment, go for it. Because yes. sometimes I guess the right fertilizer can work in the right environment and make a big difference. I always encourage my, um, my, my friends who just started growing is to really get the growing conditions right yeah. before introducing the foot. Yeah, so for example, getting your light right, your watering yeah. regime correct yeah. before you start in introducing the foot. Because if you introduce a foot before the plant is established, I find that it actually does more harm than good. Yeah, it can yeah. burn. and It can and burn the plant. Yeah. You don't want to fertilize a stressed out plant, mm. basically. It's, no good for them. So I see a lot of anthuriums here. So beautiful Warrockianum. So is there a yeah. reason why they are on the shelf? They are like rehabilitating, they're waiting to size up or? So for anthuriums, I feel that they don't really need that much of a light yeah. and something needs to go under the rack. Yeah. And they are my sacrificial lamb, I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah, but they do well, you know, they do well. They really grow quite um, beautifully. Yeah, these yeah. are one of the nice ones. Yeah. Uh, Anthurium goliath. Okay. Yeah. So this is a very, very Yeah, nice this is one. quite popular now, the yes. Goliath. So they take, this is a little bit more shaded, they're under a shelf. Yes. Correct. And they do just fine. Okay. Yeah, Anthurium's actually, I mean, they like it bright, but then they actually, when you give them the right amount of medium light, they can give you the darker leaves. Yes. And this one is flowering, so it's happy. Um, and quickly, can we talk about begonias? Uh, begonias are something that I really, really just started as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if you ask me to be honest, I'm not too sure what is this as well. Yeah, not the name and also not sure about the characters. This is also uh, becoming a bit more popular these days. But I can't grow cane begonias well in the plot because I find that they are too wet. Oh, yeah, whereas wow. rex and rhizomes are begonias are do really, 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 really well over here. So you're saying that maybe uh, the uh, rex begonias like a bit more moisture and uh, humidity? I'm not too sure to be honest. Yeah. Okay, but they are the ones that in, in your experience has thrived better yes. in, in this yes. plot. This is a very, very pretty one. So mm. it's um, wow, it's neon and behind it. It's yeah, I, I've seen this around. Stunning. I, I've not seen this one this big. Did you get it already this size or did they size up here? They size up here. Oh, um, okay. So I throw them just under the, the rack and they just yeah. flourish. Beautiful. Well, I hope to see more. Maybe hopefully they, they will thrive and you can... Because they're really, really beautiful to kind of put in between the arrows. Yes, yes, yes. They have some um, colors to a uh, sea of green. Yeah. yeah. I can see that these, actually, the ones here are still like a juvenile form of everything. That's yes. why they are still here. But we're going to look at some of the bigger plants uh, on the other side. Okay, so perhaps I can start with this. This is um, uh, ginger, costas. This is from my friend uh, Russell as well. This is Hoden Hybrid Sweet Legs. Okay. So this is special because, um, or this is something that I really like because it's hairy. Oh yeah, it's fuzzy. Yeah, it's fuzzy. So it's really, really, very really nice. Yeah. So I used to let them overhang over here and when I walk them, then they were just... They kind of pet you. Yeah, they kind of pet me. Yeah. <laughs> so this is something that is really, I really, really enjoy. And easy to care for, I'm guessing? Uh, yes, quite easy to care for. Yeah. yeah. Do so they flower beautifully or not? Uh, not for me yet. This is still quite a juvenile one. Okay. Yeah, but this is very, very pretty. Yeah. This is the Esmerodens. Okay. Yeah. So oh, this look is at that back big leaf. It's yeah. Stunning. Yeah. Nice. So my wife showed you this plant. So this is actually one of my favorite plants. Right? We call this the Form 6 or Lace Prismatic. Form 6? Yes. Um, Deliciosa? Or? Deliciosa. Okay. So you can see that it's, um, the fenestration is quite crazy. Very smooth. Yeah, very, very crazy. Did you get this locally or? No, actually I got this from Thailand. Okay. Yeah, so the story about her chugging this plant from home yeah, yeah. Was, came from an import. Okay. Yeah. And that's something that you'll always remember too. Yes, you yes. see this plant. That's a wonderful memory. This is a very, yeah. very stunning plant. Yeah. So the um, this area of my plot is actually sheltered. So I find that oh. the variegated plants don't really like um, to have a lot of moisture on their leaves. Correct. They tend to burn. Yeah. Yeah. So I give them a little bit better treatment uh, over shelter. But this also means that I have to manual them 
uh, myself because yeah. in out in the, the shade net they get watered by the rainfall whereas this I have to do it manually yeah the variegated plants I think they photosynthesize less so they don't they cannot take that excess water it'll cause the edges to crisp yes. yours is beautiful I can see from here not really I don't really see any crisping edge so that's really wonderful yes for Bozzy Joanna I realized that um, if you give them sufficient light yeah. um, they don't um, crisp at all yeah they okay. com contrary to some beliefs where they you give them heat or light they will crisp but th yeah. that's not how i it's watering too sometimes yeah the over or under really watering, watering can cause them to, to yeah. sacrifice these some platyceriums up here you don't know do you know the names um or? that is the um, okay, maybe we'll quickly look at them give them a moment Fong. so this is one of the classic uh, platycerium hybrid yeah. yeah so when they mature they will split their fronts very very nice very nice. Yeah. Where are you getting your platyceriums? Uh, Thailand, locally, and uh, in Malaysia, from Malaysia. Okay. Yeah, and then this is also another, also another classic, the uh, Fong Si Chi. Yeah, yeah, this is Malaysian, I think. Correct, yeah. So the SS Fong and the Fong Si Chi is from the same uh, Malaysian hybridite. Okay. Yeah, grower. Wonderful. Yeah, so this curves when it matures and have small pets. Yeah, and this one you probably have to like spray down often, right? Every few days? Um, actually, I find that they like it a little bit, um, dr they like it a little bit drier. Oh, that's yeah. why they're under this uh, shade. Correct. Yeah. Um, they look a bit sad now because I haven't been to the plot for the past few days. Okay. So they are looking a bit wrinkly. Yeah, yeah. but they will bounce back quickly when you, after you water, back, water them. So you don't really have to worry if they get all uh, curled up and whatnot. They yeah. will bounce back after a good watering. But this this is an anthurium. Then. Yes, this yeah. is an anthurium, uh, Manila sprite. Yeah, so it's uh, stunning. Yeah. It's, this is actually small for a Manila sprite. You're gonna need a bigger space for this plant when they outgrow it. Mm. I actually saw a mature one in Thailand, and it's way bigger, larger and bigger than mine. Yeah, yeah. They, they can become like a, oh, this one's already flowering. Yes, I'm surprised. So I guess this is maybe not so juvenile, but they they can get a mat like a child's mattress size. <laughs> <laughs> That's how big they can get. But I didn't know that the new leaf actually come out so beautifully. This is wonderful. The Burley Marks flame is uh, also something that I really, really like. Yeah. So I actually grew this out from a single leaf uh, cutting. Before it fenestrated, Yeah, right? but probably two leaves before this, so it's yeah. only this size. Yeah. I got it when it was at the, um, the peak of the price, so it was yeah. pretty expensive. Yeah, so when it started fenestrating after nine months yeah. of growth, I was really, really excited. Yeah. yeah and every leaf is really an it's it's stunning yeah. i believe it's stunning wonderful and they grow really fast because i saw the the supply really came up really fast to meet yes. the demand yes yeah yeah and this i have to give you kudos for this you managed to, to keep this alive but it's flowering this is the hoya spartoides yes but to be honest i don't do anything ex special for this plant i just throw it there yeah. and they just thrive from the moisture and the yeah. rain from the misters yeah this is not even going to focus it's so thin and wispy uh -huh. but it's actually quite a beautiful and elegant hoya mm. yeah, yeah. the alocasia reticulata is one of my favorite alocasia i don't really know how to grow alocasia mm -hmm. i'm not a very good alocasia but then um this is stunning where yes paintings and patterns and these zebra striped patios so oh, yeah, just prehistoric that. looking yeah a bit like the Zebrina, but this is like a more upgraded version because the leaves are so beautifully yes. patterned. You see the underside. The underside is interesting too when they less light through it. Mm. It's really, really gorgeous. Mm. Easy to care for or? Um, so far, it's quite easy for me. Yeah, yeah but for allocations, they can just rot and die in a matter of days. But then they also can come back very quickly. Like if you cut the whole foliage off, they can still... Yes, they, uh, they can bounce back yeah, from just as, a stump. As long as yeah. it's not rotted off. This one's starting to flower like crazy. Do you know what this philodendron is? Uh, philodendron SP Marcus. Marcus? Um, yes. It has actually a scientific name, but then I can't pronounce it, so I will not butcher its name. Yeah. Yeah, so this, I will just go by the common name of SP Marcus. Okay. Very, very pretty, pretty plant. Um, yeah. Did not expect it to turn out like this when I when it was small. Yeah. I actually got this pretty young. Uh, it's interesting, you see how thin the patios are. Yeah, before, and then it's really sized yeah, and up. Look, this, oh this. my god, it's triple, quadruple, yeah, quadruple, maybe even more with a new growth coming out. This is, and when plants, when you get them, they might slow, it starts slow, but once they take off, they become quite fast. Right? Yes, 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 yeah. And this is why it's very important for you to support your climbers with, um, oh, with, yeah. a, with a supporting pole. Yeah. Can you imagine if um, there's no pole and this it's small slop over? Yeah, this small patio is the one that's supporting. Yeah. Spiritus Sancti is uh, one of my favorite yeah. in the plot. Um, not gonna lie, I bought it in the past because it was 
the plant, you know. Yeah. When I bought it, it was like this leaf. Yeah. And then I questioned myself why did I spend so much money <laughs> on, on, the, on this leaf? <laughs> yeah. And then it's turning out to be some quite quite pr- very very pretty. Very beautiful. Yeah. yeah it's starting to nice develop. Too. Like you get the back of it. Mm. Yeah. When they emerge, they come out bright uh, red, something like the lineami. Mm-hmm. Eh? Very very pretty. Yeah. yeah. But. Ah. And it's easy to grow for you. It's easy to grow for me, but it's really, really slow. So I've had this for also about a year. Yeah. So it really can count the number of leaves that it has grown. Oh yeah. Very, very slow, but very, very rewarding plants. Yeah. And apparently uh, you don't really chop up your plants often. And so you let them size up. Yes. This here too, like this is an, I had an episode where I did this too, but on a smaller scale, this is a large pot. Mm. What is this one again? This is the Philodendron uh, Glorism times Maximum. Yeah, so it's, it's a, a hybrid form. Oh. between a glorism and a maximum. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I think um, Leslie had one as well, right? Yes. Yeah, but you let them creep along, let them root, and then you can chop it after it's been rooted into the next pot over. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's how you can maintain the size of the leaves too. Yeah. And it will reduce the um, propagation stress when you do this because yeah. it's rooted into a new pot. Already. Is this variegated? Yes, these are variegated. Holy crap, okay. So this is a variegated plant? Yes, but the variegation lose, um, kind of fades away after it really yeah so it's sporadic yeah. yeah but if you propagate that node with the variegated leaf there's a chance that you can get especially when two sides of it are variegated yes so maybe yeah. that's one good leaf to watch out for that node so i see that yun is busy now taking care of the little <laughs> fish here but it's your brother's fish you said it's your yes, brother's this hobby brother's fish. so he not only takes care of your plants but also your brother's <laughs> uh, fish as well this is something <laughs> wife that- of the year award <laughs> This is something that I really, really think is very stunning. It's yeah, a tiger lily. Yeah. yeah, it's very, very pretty. This one is stunning, my gosh. So, you want to tell us what this is? Uh, this is a philodendron like Nami, right? Yes. yes. Look very, at that. And when you look through the back and that new leaf behind, they're, oh, they're really known for their new leaf. They unfrost and this little bit of pink here as well. Yes. Stunning. I've very not seen one this big. big. Easy growing, yeah, hasn't, they've never given me any issues before. Yeah, it just grows and grows and grows. It's a creeper too, just like the Gloriosum. Like, oh, it's flowering, holy crap, okay. Oh, oh. That, that's this like beautiful patterning coming down the patio too. This is a really, really beautiful design. When you look at it from far, it's like a, a normal green leaf, but you know, it really takes a bit of attention, a bit of time to discover that there's hidden designs within this plant. To be honest, it almost looks an, like an artificial leaf. Yeah, yeah, it does from here, it looks fake. Yeah, it looks fake, yeah. yeah. Very many leaves. You don't cut off the flowers, right? No, I actually enjoy the inflorescence. Yeah. Yeah. Just let nature do it, does its things. I mean, technically speaking, if you cut it off, the, the leaf will not be interrupted. The size of the leaf will still grow. Yeah. Yeah, but you can really enjoy the flowers when, when they're in bloom, because philodendron surprisingly have some amazing blooms. Yeah. Actually, this is a nice one, the uh, Lele Miano. Yeah. yeah, very, very interesting leaf shapes. Yeah. I think I enjoy um, plants that gives up really, really funky leaf shapes, you know, yeah. leaves that doesn't look like leaves. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah but this looks so out of the world. Yeah, yeah. and as that, for me, I, I think they look like keys because every one oh. is different. They yes, unlock, yes. Each of them unlocks something else. Yes, yes. Not that you mentioned, it really looks like. Yeah. None of them will be the same. Yeah. Very, very nice. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, this is a special one. Um, I'm not too sure what is this. This is also a SP that I got. But wow. you see it twos. Yeah, naturally. Oh. Every leaf twos. Yeah. Yeah, this suffers some rust, but very, very interesting plant. Is this a mutated or is it just naturally the species does this? Uh, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But very, very interesting. Yeah. Maybe someone in the audience will shout out yeah. <laughs> what this is. So, it seems to have um, very, very nice um, white veinings. Yeah. yeah, white veinings we call roughly. It does have that VGI type look. Yeah. And that long leaf of the Warakuyanum. Correct. But this is a philodendron. This is a philodendron. Which means it's easier to care for probably yeah. than the, Very easy. I just throw it up there and it just does it. And all these colocages are living in full water. And I'm sure they like it because there's some nutrients coming from the fish. Yes. Um, wow. But for color cages, I find that they grow best under full sun. Yeah. They will really give them the colors. They'll size up too very quickly. Correct. Yeah. Interesting. 
So you mostly grow aeroids. This is a nice begonia. Mm. But you grow mostly aeroids around here, right? Yes. Um, just uh, actually philo philodendrons and really monsteras. monsteras. Yeah. Uh, and some anthuriums back there. I guess some anthuriums, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. anthuriums. But this has really beautiful uh, pink edge around the, the leaves. Yes. Do you know what this is? No, I'm not too sure why it's this too. This is also a philodendron SP that I got. Yeah. yeah. Very, very nice. Gorgeous, I mean from the back too, the lines really come through in the back. Anturium palladiforum, uh, one of my favorite anturiums. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Let me come around so I can show how, how yeah. long it actually is. Very, very nice. It's interesting how they turn out differently also. Yeah. So these comes up very thick and um, uh, velvety. Yeah, yeah, it does. I have one over there mm. where you see it's a very slender. Uh, another one, that yes, one, right? this is also a palladiforum. Yeah. So it's way more... It's so dramatic. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't see many of these in Indonesia. Not a lot of people grow them, surprisingly. Yeah. But this is really, really quite something. The way that they move also, like the way they kind of flop around. Yes. Very lazy and then... Yeah. But I think it's a little bit too hot, so you find that they curl up. Oh yeah, yeah so. possibly. Because they're used to like more cloud forest type. Correct, yeah. Uh, yeah. Monstera gracilis is also something that's um, pretty neat. Gracilis? Yes. You said that this is new to me, first time. Yeah, so it, it's so lacy. Hey, yeah. Yeah, very, very pretty plant. It's kind of like an uh, obliqua, but Oblique. not quite as like delicate. It's yes. It's a bit more sturdy. Yeah. Very, very oh, nice. Yeah. This is actually quite beautiful. This is the obliqua, obviously. Correct, this yeah. is the obliqua. Very, it's very easy growing plant as well. Yeah. And it's amazing that you're collecting these, I think, what, a, maybe a year, a year, more than a year ago. Hmm. And you've already learned so much <laughs> and collected so much. And what I want to say is that you also came in at the right time because you missed the whole price going up thing, you know, like during COVID. Actually, I think I hit it right at the peak, but then okay. um, after a while, it, it dropped. So you were a bit affected by the drop? Yes, I was affected by the drop. But I think... Um, I will often tell people do not look at the plants as um, dollars nice. and cents. Yeah. yeah, if not, you start losing the love for you have for the plant, the passion for you have for the plants. Yeah, even like something that's cheap, something that's um, common, you know, maybe something that's very nice. Beautiful. Yeah, for example, this um, SP Laniata. Yeah, very, very common plant, you know, but yeah. it's stunning. Yeah, it's oh, stunning. Yeah. And the variegated one is really coming in the market hot. A lot of stock suddenly came in mm. for the variegated one of these. So yeah, I guess uh, we're done with the tour here and your closing statement was that we should try to uh, appreciate the plant for what they are. The price really doesn't really matter. Yes. Because at the end of the day, you will, over the years, you'll grow them up big and enjoy them and watch their mature size. Mm. And one more thing, I guess, to, to take away from this plot is that if you run out of space, get more space yes <laughs> so actually i only have um half of this area so yeah. it ends up here yeah yeah but the plants got so huge that uh, i kind of have to partner with my brother to ex to expand to here so yeah. they can really flourish yeah and it really helps to have a spouse to have uh support yes it really helps. <laughs> yes yeah all right thank you so much thank John. you yeah. uh, i will see you guys in the next one thank you bye bye Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So this is an encore nobody asked for. <laughs> Surprise bonus. <laughs> this is called the Lake Salita actually. Yeah, this is a shared um, area between uh, Russell, yeah. uh, the outfield, yeah. um, and myself. Okay. Yeah, so this is where we grow um, the Fusan plants. Yeah, yeah Calocasias, uh, the Musa, the bananas. Yeah. Um, uh, things that we really go here. Yeah, this so, is the Ferris Nest. This is, do you know the names? This is a uh, Midnight Bright. Yeah, okay. this is very stunning. So, Ferris Moss has been something that I really, really 
that really really intrigued me when I started uh, yeah. this entire plant journey. Yeah. It's crazy how the leaves, um, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It just looks like it's, it's so crazy and alien. Out looking. of this world. Yeah. Out of this world. I don't know how what what it does to evolve this way. Something triggered it to evolve this way. This really um actually a hybrid by uh, Brian Botanicals. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So he spent I think a few years um, cultivating and he come out with the ferrous musk. Very, very nice. Interesting, so it's not okay. That makes sense, because in nature, like, this would have been pretty strange correct, for correct. to develop that, yes. that tree. Yeah. Yeah. So this the Midnight Bright, it's also very, very nice. Yeah, look at the, a lot of electrifying colors around it, and then older leaves. Actually, Most, yeah, these are from Thailand or not? These are from Thailand, yeah. yeah. Those over there are from Indonesia. Okay. Yeah. I'm guessing this a lot of Thailand has hybridizing efforts for these color cages, they yes. really love them. And so for color cages, actually Indonesia is one of the biggest um, player in the market where they, really? hybrid, correct, where they hybrid, hybridize a lot of them. Yeah, so these entire rows are all Indonesia's uh, color cage hybrid. Okay. Um, this is a very nice one, the yeah. color cage thunderstorm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an Indonesian hybrid, very, very stunning. Yeah. So I had actually been growing this for a year plus. Yeah. yeah. And when I bought it, it wasn't cheap. So it was a joint um, purchase with my friend. Okay. The Calocasia The King is also stunning. Look at the colors. Yeah. Yeah. Very, actually, very beautiful. Actually, this is blowing my mind because you know what? I, I'm from Indonesia and I go to a lot of plant events and talk about plants you know, with aeroid lovers. Mm. Calocasias never came up. Yes, um, Calocasias don't really... I don't know, have the market for it. People really do enjoy it. Yeah. Um, firstly, I think it's because of the growing requirements that it needs. Yeah. It needs to have a full sun environment and whatsoever. And they right. can be quite of a pest uh, magnet, uh, okay. spider mites, all this and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so far, I have, don't really have any issues growing them out here. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like the, the prevalence of seeing them in shows, competitions and social media, they are a lot more prevalent in Bangkok, in Thailand. Mm. And I think now in Singapore, I see them here like being appreciated. But this is, yes. yeah, this is really blowing my mind that this is, this the, is from Indonesia. Kalokasia black uh, lava. Very, black lava. very, very interesting. Because you have the white lava, so yes. this is the black version. It blows my mind how it's like so, yeah. so glossy and there's a matte area also. Yeah. Yeah, and they come in different forms and shapes. For example, this is fully velvety and matte. Yeah. yeah. Whereas compared to something that's like here where it's uh, totally waxy. And colocages, they can be hybridized quite readily with one another probably. This is yes. why you can achieve so much diversity Correct. in hybridization. And they love to sit in water. So they're kind of like swampy type plants. Yes, swampy type of plants. Yeah. Maybe nutrient rich? They are very or... hungry for fertilizers. So okay. what I do is I just throw um, goat manure. So you see all these pallets. Oh, those are from goats. Yeah, Dang. so I find them, they are really, really good for the color cages. They don't really smell, so I do highly recommend them. How do you find goat uh, droppings here? They are quite uh, readily available here in um, plant shops okay. in Singapore. All right, I guess we're going to bid you farewell for sure, for real this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you so much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. And thank, thank you again, you. John and Yoon is over there. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys.